genetic modification, chemical dependence. Is it sustainable from what you've seen in your years of experience? No, and I think the whole thing is if whether it be uh, a human or an animal or whatever it is, if we don't get back to prevention and getting to, with healthy men, we all got an immune system. Plants, they make, they make all these botanicals because they're protecting themselves. And if they're not healthy, they can't do that. So we start modifying and changing. Mother Nature is going to bat last in this show out here. And we're just going to get a less of a quality food. And it's going to, we know we, everything you just watch those TV ads about drugs. I mean, the side effect list is 25 times longer than the beneficial list. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and GMOs and the chemicals that are getting into our food and things, we're giving up things. Trace minerals aren't in it. This isn't in it. So I don't see that as being long-term sustainable. And I think the consumer has got to, is going to fight back and, and I think our environment can't really tolerate it. So why don't we, I think we have the information. I think we got it all figured out to lay the base to grow this healthy crop. I'm not saying we don't need intervention once in a while. Now I was just at conferences, all the, the, a lot of the fertilizer companies or biological companies, they're all trying to develop insecticides, fungicides, herbicides, pesticides that are certified organic. And <laughs> yeah. We still better play a prevention game. We don't need to just substitute yeah. a, a healthier drug. Because Roundup was supposed to be a whole lot healthier than DDT, you know, and whatever. Oh boy! You know, DDT was the bad guy. And, oh, now we got atrazine was supposed to be really yeah. good compared to 2,4-D, and on and on the list goes. But yeah. they all end up being giving us trouble later on. Yeah.